Good morning, Grade Nines, and happy greetings to each and every one of you. Welcome to Worksheet Cloud's Natural Sciences lesson. If you have any questions during today's lesson, please send an email to me at grade9 at worksheetcloud.com. I know that normally you'd be in your natural sciences classroom or in the science lab with your awesome teacher and all your friends around you. Um, and we know that that's not the case. So today I hope that you have a wonderful time of learning online with me today. So who am I? I'm Mrs. Ernston and I'm Worksheet Cloud's grade nine natural sciences teacher. I want you to be ready for today's lesson, so please grab a pen and paper or your files or books or whatever it is that you need and remember to take notes as we discuss things online in class and when you get back to school, you can share everything that you've learned with your friends and with your teacher. The focus of today's lesson is on compounds and chemical formulae. So we're going to have a look at a pure substance being made up of elements. We're going to have a look at how atoms are combined in a fixed ratio. We're going to see that each compound has a unique name and formula, that atoms in a compound are held together by chemical bonds, compounds form during chemical reactions, and the formation of a compound involves a chemical reaction and energy. This is just a revision from yesterday's lesson. It's a matching columns activity, so you can press pause and I will wait for you while you see if you can match the terms with the definitions. Well done, I'm sure you found that really easy, but let's just go over your answers quickly. So an atom is the smallest particle of a chemical element that can exist on its own. An element, an element is a substance made up of particles that are called atoms. In an element, all the atoms are of the same type. A compound is a substance that is formed when two or more elements combine together chemically. So a chemical reaction must take place in order for a compound to form. And lastly, a mixture is a collection of different substances. The particles of a mixture will not be the same and there will be a different number of different types of particles in the mixture. This is also a wonderful diagram to show the relationship between atoms and molecules. So if we have a look at elements, elements are built up of atoms and the atoms are chemically bonded together. And remember that a molecule is two or more atoms that are chemically bonded, so we can have molecules of elements. The other thing that can happen is different elements can combine chemically to form compounds. We can have atoms that can chemically combine and together with compounds, they can be built up out of a whole lot of atoms and we can get molecules of compounds. So each compound has a unique name. You can call out or you can jot down why is this important. It is important because a compound is a substance that is formed when two or more elements combine together chemically and the atoms combine in a fixed ratio. So let's have a look at this example here. This is an example of water. And water can be represented using the symbols H2O. So this diagram shows that we have one hydrogen atom that's red combining with, apologies, this diagram shows that we have one oxygen atom that is red combining with two hydrogen atoms that are white. The reason why it is so important to focus on the ratio and pro proportions of how these atoms combine is because if we have a look at this diagram here, this diagram has got the same atoms, but they're on a different ratio. This has got 
two atoms of oxygen combining with two atoms of hydrogen. And this is a completely different compound known as H2O2, or some of you may know this to be hydrogen peroxide. So it is really important when we have a look at the naming of compounds to also focus on the ratio of atoms that combine from the different elements because as you can see in this example here, we make different compounds depending on what atoms combine and depending on what the ratio of those atoms are. So if we have a look at a compound, they are written with a chemical formula. So as taken from the previous screen, here we have two small atoms of hydrogen represented by the white circles and we have a large um, red atom which represents oxygen. So when we write that chemically, we represent hydrogen with the letter H and we re represent oxygen with the letter O. And according to this dot diagram, when we are making the compound water, two hydrogen atoms combine with one oxygen atom. And we write the number of atoms as a subscript. So here the subscript 2 tells us that there are two hydrogen atoms in a molecule of water. And here the subscript is 0. And that 0 just means that there is one atom of oxygen in this molecule. If we have a look at this substance here, I want to see if you are able to write the chemical formula for the substance. So if you need to pause the screen, that's fine. Otherwise, you can quickly just jot down or call out what do you think the chemical formula is for the substance. And yes, you were correct. It's H2O2 because there are two atoms of hydrogen. So we represent hydrogen with the H. This subscript represents the number of hydrogen atoms in this compound. So there's one, two hydrogen atoms. O is represented by the red atom. And there are two red atoms in hydrogen peroxide. I would like you to do another two questions now. One, are you able to draw a dot diagram for carbon dioxide? which we represent as CO2. And can you remember the name of the compound with the formula CO2? So you can press pause so long and I'll wait for you. So if we have a look at these two diagrams here, and I'm not too sure what you, what you drew, but have a careful look and see how correct you were. So can you draw a dot diagram for CO2? So C has got nothing written there, which means in this diagram, we need one atom representing C. So if we have a look here, here is one black atom representing C. And then we need to have oxygen and we need to have two atoms of oxygen. So here is one oxygen atom. Here is another oxygen atom. So our dot diagram for carbon dioxide would look like this. And yes, the name for CO2 is carbon dioxide. More about the naming of chemicals in tomorrow's lesson. Again, just a reminder how important it is that we look at the ratio of atoms of elements when they combine to form a compound, because if we have a look at carbon monoxide, the subscript here is nothing, which means there's one atom of carbon combines with one atom of oxygen, and then we make a compound known as carbon monoxide. Carbons also form during, compounds also form during chemical reactions. So here we have one atom combining with a molecule made up of two atoms and here we have a molecule when we show how they chemically combine. So in chemical reactions, the atoms and molecules arrange themselves to form new molecules. So we know that this is a chemical reaction 
because we have a plus sign here and we have an arrow showing that the reaction happened. The atoms in one set of compounds separate as the bonds break between them and they get rearranged into new groups as new chemical bonds form. When this happens, we say that a chemical reaction has occurred. And in one of our future lessons, we will have a look at compounds and chemical reactions. I would like you to complete this activity as well. So if you need more time, please just press the pause button, write down your answers, and I'm happy to wait for you. Well done, let's have a look at your answers. So the first one was done for you, water. What is the substance made of? We told you that it's got two H atoms and one O atom. So the chemical formula there is going to be H2O. With salt, it's made up of one Na atom and one Cl atom. So we write that as NaCl. Carbon dioxide has got one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. And we write that as CO2. Ammonia is made up of one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms, so we write that as NH3. Methane is written as one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms, and we write that as CH. Sorry, that should be four. Magnesium oxide is one magnesium atom and one oxygen atom, and we write that as MgO. And then the last one, I thought might be a little bit tricky. That is sodium sulfate, and that has got two sodium atoms, one sulfur atom, and one oxygen and four oxygen atoms, and we write that as NaSO4. I'm sure you found that activity really easy, and in a few lessons' time, we're going to have a look at how do we name compounds? So in what order do we put the H's and the O's and the N's and the CL's? So I know you might be a little uncertain of that now. Don't worry, in a few lessons coming up, I'll clarify that for you. All I wanted you to understand today was how atoms combine to form compounds. So I wonder if you could write down three facts about compounds and chemical formula from today's lesson, two new things that you learned today, and one question that you may have. And please remember that you can email your questions to me at grade 9 at worksheetscloud.com. Just a little sneak peek into tomorrow's lesson. What you can do so that you can be better prepared for the lesson is can you brainstorm everything that you can remember about the periodic table that you would have covered in grade seven and grade eight? And if possible, can you revise the first 20 elements and their symbols? To help you on your way, I've prepared a table like this. So you can always pause the screen and you can just copy down the numbers and the names of the elements and you can then use the periodic table to find the symbols. And in case you don't have a periodic table handy, here is a periodic table. Again, you can just pause the screen and I hope that helps you prepare for next lesson. I am so proud of each and every one of you and how you've engaged in today's lesson. And well done for taking responsibility for your learning. I really, really am so proud of you. So, grade nines, thank you so much for watching today's lesson. This lesson was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud, and please be on the lookout for future lessons. I can't wait to see you again. Bye.